is uh, rightfully so one of the finest stand-up comics that uh, this country has ever produced. And he's going to show you uh, why tonight. Please welcome to the stage. That Canadian guy, Glenn Foster. Thank you. Thank you very much. That is so nice. Well, we've run out of applause now. This, oh wow, this is really nice, eh? This is, uh, pressure's on, huh? It better be funny. <laughs> anyway, you guys seem like a nice group. You're laughing, eh? Laughter's good. Laughter reduces stress. Did you know? Stress is a killer. I'm only 35, I just look like this because I worry about shit. <laughs> laughter, laughter actually uh, reduces stress. Did you know? Yes. Certainly it will reduce my stress when the rest of you start laughing. <laughs> Laughter reduces stress. Sex also reduces, also reduces stress. I, I, I bet there are slightly different uh, stress reduction levels, huh? Between laughter and sex. You would have to laugh a lot, huh? You would have to be doubled over in pain to come anywhere near close to the stress reduction of the worst sex you can possibly imagine. I don't know about you, but for me, oh, sex, oh, stress, oh, just relief, oh, just, oh, just your whole body goes, and your mind, it just waves, it just, oh, it, it relieves almost as much stress as is involved in getting sex in the first place. So there's always that little residual tension. Here's the odd thing, uh, laughter reduces stress, and sex reduces stress, so you would think that combining laughter and sex, but no, as it turns out, completely the opposite effect is very dangerous. Stress, oh, you have no idea. I live with my preteen daughter, my premenopausal wife, and a previously abused female Australian shepherd. I know, I walk in the door and it is bitch, bitch, bitch. <laughs> This is my little impression that I do at home. That's me drowning in the estrogen pool. Oh, I have ADD, I'll tell you that before I forget. I actually have adult ADD. Have you even heard of the guy? I just got diagnosed like, because normally they get it when you're a kid. Oh, when you're a kid, oh, they can't wait for a kid to have ADD, oh, 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 this one's displaying signs of an imagination. Drug him, drug him. But I have adult ADD, it's worse than ADD. Technically, it's not even ADD, it's like A-A-D-D, eh? It's like extra stuff to have to think about before I can do any actual thinking. Oh, man, I'll tell you how I found out. I was uh, reading an article about adult ADD, well, I didn't read the whole thing. <laughs> the TV was on. I think I made a sandwich. Oh, I love to eat. Oh, eating and sleeping are my two favorite. Oh, yeah, I like to eat just enough to get tired. <laughs> Sleep just enough to get hungry. <laughs> huh? Keep a nice rhythm going there. You ever go to Lisa? All you can eat, all you can drink, all you can do is pass out on the beach, you wake up in a panic. Oh, the shit was eating or drinking. <laughs> There's so much to do today. Where are we in the schedule? Glasses or plates? How big are the circles in the sand? We have to, have to go hang gliding. I have to go hang gliding. <laughs> Not me. No way. I am deathly afraid of heights. There is no way I would go hang gliding. Heights and spiders are my two absolute freak out. Yeah. Spider, yeah, because they're creepy. Spiders. <laughs> you never know where they are. And the way they attack their prey and just suck the life out of them. Huh? Like the government or ex wives <laughs> I'm adult ADD, I know. Here's people think that ADD is that you can't pay attention to anything, but that's only half of it. The reason you can't pay attention to anything is because you're trying to pay attention to everything all the time. It's like the least little bit of stimulus comes your way. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? It has your complete and utter total attention for a second. And then you're on to the next thing. And then, and, and, and that's how your day goes. It's busy, do, 
I have a to-do list with no fucking check marks at all. There's nothing. I wake up in the morning with a hundred things to do. I go to bed with two hundred things to do. I actually have two to-do lists. I lost the first to-do list. In fact, I have my new to-do list, the first thing on is find the old to-do list. So that, oh, it's not good at all. I am the weakest link in my own organization. It's scary sometimes. I did drive here, that is stressful. You know, commuters, 905, you know. Eh? They've done studies, they've done studies. Just being in traffic can literally take years off your life. Especially if you're involved in a fatal collision. <laughs> literally. You ever be driving and suddenly traffic just stops? Eh? You start thinking, oh, probably an accident. Eh? Concern for your fellow human being for about a minute. And then it's like, there better be a goddamn accident. If there's not, there will be when I get there, boy. I love these people. Oh, there'll be an accident when I get, well, can I get out of the car before you have the accident? Is that okay with you? I think, and then you get this, so you all wound up, and then you get there, and it's like, because I lose my mind. I have no pain. It's like the least bit of slow, and I'm like, man, when we get over to hell, there's this, there better be bodies strewn from what, there better be guts on a pole, people on fire. When we get the car, better be flipping through the air. If we get there and it's over, they better fucking flip it again for us, because it, <laughs> bullshit, if I have to sit here for 15 minutes. And then you get there, it's just construction. I know, and now you're all wound up, all that tension. I think just to relieve the tension of where they have construction, they should have a car flipped over and five guys laying on the highway. Because you get there, right, check it out, bodies on the road, that was worth my time. That's only 15 minutes, let's go around and see that again, that was nothing. Let's go around again. Bodies on the road, summer jobs for students. And what's the difference, really? Five guys laying on the road, five guys leaning on a shovel. <laughs> Doesn't affect the budget. It's the important thing. Sort of throwing some math there. That was... We're not good at math. You know, they did a survey. They found out one in four people cannot do basic math. Yeah, so we know this statistic is probably wrong. <laughs> I think it's the way they teach math. We weren't even allowed to use calculators. You just get this nonsense. You're not allowed to use calculators because you're not allowed to use them in the real world. <laughs> oh yeah, look around the real world. Calculators never caught on. <laughs> what a passing phase that whole computer goes in. No, no, I prefer to work this out by hand. Put your machines away. Don't come crying to me when the year 2000 comes along. You can't do long division. <laughs> what a load of nonsense that. Remember, remember back at the Y2K, our biggest worry was, oh, I might have to get a new computer next year. I feel like the first millennium, not as big a deal. No Y1K bug. Around the year 998 AD, all the computer geeks get together. Holy shit, have you seen it? Everyone, 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 this is important, everyone! We are going to need more deeds. <laughs> we have to start a whole new row. We were fools back then in the zeros. <laughs> bad with math, bad with money. How many people, be honest, okay, you only have a bank machine to see if you have any money or not. <laughs> Just go there once a day, beep, 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 not today, okay, come back tomorrow. <laughs> I thought I had money. <laughs> oh man, Wait, is the economy getting a little better? I don't know about you guys, man. I got one of these uh, pre-decline credit cards in the mail. <laughs> Comes cut up in the envelope, huh? <laughs> that is harsh. That is mean of the bank, really, I thought. We used to get pre-approved credit. That's how all the trouble started. That's how we ended up bailing out the banks. Bailing out the banks. Yeah, because God knows it's hard to make money as a bank, isn't it? Oh, there are so many rules. Get this, you're only allowed to charge somebody $2 to take their own fucking money out of their own fucking account. Well, how do you stay in business? Man? I wonder every day. 
$25 service charge to me if someone writes me a bad check. Well, geez, if this is the way you operate, I can't believe you haven't run into trouble before now. <laughs> if, if only the system were somehow more tilted in the bank's favor, perhaps. If only maybe they could borrow interest and uh, borrow, borrow interest. Maybe they could borrow money at a much lower rate of interest than they loan it to you. If only they had vast real estate holdings to fall back on in these tough times. Credit is the problem. See, when you pay cash for something, right? You reach into your wallet, you take out the money, it's physical, it's tangible, it's in your hand. There's no connection with credit. There's nothing. It's just like, <laughs> I'm Credit Ninja. <laughs> Feel my buying power. You know what credit card, when you use a credit card, you know it should be like? It should be like a taser. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, okay, all right, all right. The 60-inch TV is off the table. Then. Okay, I'm gonna go walk around the parking lot and come back and try for the 46, I think, at this point. Then. Man. See, cash, right? You, you reach into your wallet, you take, you watch it. You have all that time to watch the money as you're handing it over. That seems like a lot for one dance. Hey. <laughs> oh, I don't know. There's a lot of guys here sitting with women. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I don't know. These other guys are assholes laughing at that joke. I don't even know what it's about, frankly. I don't a lot of married people here. It's hard. What is it? One in three marriages ends in divorce, and the other two murder suicide. <laughs> and it's more complex. It's, it's different mindsets. You know, we just think differently. Like, women get married, and it is complicated. There are so many factors: in it. love, romance, sex, security. Is he going to be a good father? Do we have to live in Sunderland for the rest of our lives? You know, all these thoughts go through their head. Whereas men, we just, se we separate. We're simple creatures of love, sex. <laughs> Two different cities if necessary. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, I love her. And I travel. <laughs> it's true, guys don't need a relationship as long as they're having sex. And women don't need sex as long as they're having chocolate. So, you know about the chocolate. Yes, I saw this on Oprah, right? There's an episode called The Love Drug, right? And after seeing it, I can't believe they still encourage you to buy a woman chocolate for Christmas and Valentine's Day. It's completely counterproductive. It's counterreproductive, is what it is. No, because you know what's going to happen, right? Is she's going to eat all the chocolate and you're not going to get any, right? And then, you're not going to get any. <laughs> chocolate. It's not even the chocolate. That's the weird part. It's not, it's not the actual chocolate. It's the act. The physical act of eating chocolate releases certain chemicals in your brain give you the same feeling you get from being in a relationship. Fat and useless. <laughs> Ooh, cooled off in here all of a sudden. Now yeah, things were warm there for a while. I was concerned about the global warming, and all of a sudden, <laughs> I like this weather. But it could snow tonight. This is what kills me about Canada. Okay, it snows every single year. I don't think there's been a year where it has not snowed, but every year, it's such a big surprise. <laughs> We forget where we live. We must be the most optimistic people on the planet. Well, well maybe this is the year. Ah. And then first snowfall, look out the window. Ah, oh, shit. Again this year. Well, this is bullshit. The hell am I paying taxes for? And the answer to that, to bring in the army to shovel the snow. The hell are we doing going to war when it could snow? Did you get snow tires? You couldn't get them a couple years ago, you know, because the Quebec government made them mandatory, right? Because you know how the Quebec government thinks. Right? It's like, well, we had a lot of snow last year. 
This is how they talk in private, by the way. There's no French, just English with a funny accent. I couldn't believe it. I was there, I'm like, what do we spend all this money for? <laughs> we had a lot of snow last year, so we have two choices. We could uh, make everybody get snow tires, or we could clean the road properly. <laughs> and we know that's not going to happen. Have you driven in Quebec? The only time the roads are smooth is when the ice and snow fill in the potholes. You know? <laughs> they never clear the roads. They, never, they don't clear the roads. They just kind of scrape them down and polish them to a high gloss sheen. You know? <laughs> the first snowfall, the Zambonis are out on the roads. And I hear some English guys are coming without snow tires. So. <laughs> and now other governments, other governments, other government, other, <clears throat> other governments want to follow suit. Because you know how all governments think, is like, all right, we'll make everybody get snow tires, and then everyone will be safer. No. Then everyone will think that they are safer, which will make them more dangerous. So now, instead of slamming on the brakes and sliding slowly through the red light, be able to accelerate with confidence from 15 blocks back. It's yellow, it's okay, we got snow tires, here we go. I've actually been trying to learn French. I've uh, been watching uh, French Sesame Street, in fact. <laughs> we have three French channels in Toronto for the benefit of the seven francophones living in the greater metro area. You gotta see, it's like one little kid, Sesame Street is brought to you today by the letter H. And the little kid, La Rue Sesame, et dans le vous aujourd'hui, par la lettre. <laughs> Yes, like millions of French Canadians, little Jacques cannot say the letter H. Your dollars can help him overcome this crippling social embarrassment. Send your dollar to Alping and the box 1414 Orton Street to Quebec. Here's the stupid part is I was born in Montreal, so uh, I didn't grow up there. But who does? Eh? <laughs> when every Ford building is a strip club and you can drink till four, then exactly encourage emotional responsibility. Uh, the great thing about being born in Montreal, of course, is if this comedy thing doesn't work out, I can always become prime minister. So, I don't know who to vote for, man. It's just to me, I don't know. It just, uh, nothing changes, you know. It doesn't matter who gets in. They all spend money, you know, left, right. You might as well wake up with your checkbook in your hand. And this is your day as a Canadian every day. <laughs> all right, you bastards. Who gets the first one? <laughs> who do I make it out to? Federal, provincial, municipal. Oh, they're the worst elections. Municipal. Nobody knows who's running. Nobody votes. Nobody gives a shit. It's like a lottery. Ah, yeah, geez, give me six quick picks. I don't know. <laughs> Check your answers the next day. Hey, I got the bonus counselor. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Oh, and now we have these big infrastructure projects. I love the oh, big, big, big pro oh boy. The feds are going to throw in some money, and, and then the province is going to kick in some cash, and then the municipality. So, as a, as a taxpayer, what you're telling me is, I'll throw in some money, and then I'll throw in some money, and then I'll top up whatever's needed after that. Is that pretty much how this is going to go? Oh. It's infuriating. Even when they do good things, they just piss money away. Like any kind of relief effort, right? It's like, oh, the governments fall, Great Britain pledges this much, United States pledges this much, and Canada will. The Canadian government is proud to say that we will match any funds the Canadians give. Well, that feels kind of good, doesn't it? There's my money, and there's my money! What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> Gotta give them half now just to get the right amount. Oh, so I've been trying to lose some weight, and uh, no, I've been hoping, hoping to lose some weight, so I'm, no trying at all, now I think about it, no trying. <laughs> Anyone else on this particular weight loss plan? <laughs> just shoving shit in your face all day, well, maybe this will just disappear. <laughs> Perhaps the laws of physics will not apply this year. 
Does this make me look fat, by the way? <laughs> Not the shirt, the fat. I think that's the problem. Uh, the shirt's doing its job, believe me. You don't want the shirt out of the way. That would be, that would be bad for everybody. I ate too much, that's my problem. I'm not even hungry half the time. I eat for sport. And you know you're doing it. People go, you hungry? You go, no. Could you eat? Sure. <laughs> what do you got? Christmas is the worst, isn't it? Just going from house to house, everybody giving you booze and food. It's like Halloween for adults. <laughs> After a while, I was like, oh, I cannot drive. No, I, no, I've had too much turkey. I'm just gonna lie down for a while. <laughs> turkey, nature sedative. If like a little bit gets in your sandwich and you don't know about it, it's like, did I just have a stroke? What the hell? Thank God I wasn't driving. Never mind no, no texting in the car. No club sandwiches on the highway. That's my rule right there. Turkey, man, what kind of weird natural defense is that for a bird? Huh? This is the shit that wastes my day, sir. This, this, this is the stuff. You wonder what a comedian does during the day? No check marks. Just wonder what kind of bird has natural defense of the turkey. It's not even a good defense. The bird is dead at the time. It, it is, it's not a defense, it's more like a revenge from the gravy, you know? I'm dead, but you'll be sleepy. I think other animals must figure out millions of years ago, herds of turkey-like creatures roaring across of another animal. How many of those did we kill? One, you're fucking kidding me, one. Oh, oh I gotta lie down. Oh, king of the beast, my ass, I'll be on the couch if you need me. The couch is your family, anything like my big turkey dinner, right? Then we all turn into wounded superheroes. Oh, must find couch, warn the others. Can't reach pants. You ever just be laying on the couch, you can't believe how much hate? Like, what did I do that? I'm so stupid. I wasn't even hungry. I'm never doing that. Hey, are those cashews? <laughs> Good. So I mentioned the check thing earlier. I still write checks. I know it's primitive. I people hate, I love checks. I pay all my bills with checks. End of the month, big check writing ritual passed down from father to son for hundreds of years. A big stack of bills, big stack of checks. Get out the pen every month. It's the same damn thing that heat hydro. They can kiss my ass. I will sit in the dark. That was my dad's threat. That was my dad's threat. No matter what the government will screw them. I'll sit in the dark. I know it's such a stupid, dumb dad threat, isn't it? It's like, well, if I don't get my way, I will punish myself further. Let's see just how much of me I can take. Oh, we're all sitting in the dark lately. Hey, that's our latest pastime. Earth hour. Uh, Earth hour, sit in the dark for an hour. Didn't it used to be Earth day? Wasn't it Earth day and all of a sudden it's Earth hour? There's meetings going on that you and I do not get to go to. Is it Earth Day? Fuck that. A whole day for the Earth? You out of your mind? We're losing productivity. That is it. We have an hour. An hour on Saturday before the hockey game. That's plenty for everybody. An hour. Earth Day, my ass. Starts out Earth Day. Now it's Earth Hour. And pretty soon what? A moment of silence for the Earth. <laughs> Anybody see the uh, CBC environmental show that I did? It, it, no one! No one! Are you sure it was on right after Little Moss? <laughs> I've been looking into this whole environmental thing and uh, I don't know if you know, but we're in trouble. Yeah. Oh, we're still chopping down the rainforest. How long have we been saying don't chop down the rainforest. Still doing it, huh? Despite the impenetrable shield of rock stars and supermodels that protects the rainforest. Huh? Still able to get the bulldozers through. And we don't even know what's in the rainforest. That's the stupid part. Could be all kinds of wonderful medical discoveries. Could be the cure for cancer, the new Viagra. At the very least, 
some really good recreational shit that we have not come across yet. Before we tear up another root or step on another beetle, we should send in teams of hippies to just lick everything and smoke and consume and inject and just wallow in the marshlands of the Amazon for months at a time. We'll put GPS locators and two-way radios so we can find them later. Oh man, you gotta get over here, man. This is so good, it feels so good, man. There's only one, no man, you got Oh, there's five now, man. Oh, there's 10, there'll be more when you get here. We're losing species, did you know that? Yeah, we're losing like a species a day. Now, I don't wanna be all doom and gloom. On the positive side, the list of endangered species is getting shorter. <laughs> The polar caps are shrinking. Did you know that? The polar caps are shrinking. And again, on the positive side, the penguins don't have as far to march. <laughs> I don't know. They say we should do this. They say take public. I love how they say we should make more public transit. Nobody wants public transit, okay? I don't want it. You don't want it. Even the people who are on public transit don't want to be on public transit because the public is on public transit. <laughs> you can't compete with a car. There's no comparison. Let's look at the schedule. It's leaving right fucking now. <laughs> and it's coming back at a convenient time too. Look at that, where we want to go is right on the route. No one ever gets into their own car and goes, oh, thank God I got a seat. I thought I was going to have to stand the whole way. <laughs> come up with these ideas and they don't back them up at all. You know, the, the hydrogen economy. Remember the hydrogen? Oh yeah, we're going to burn hydrogen because it burns clean. Eh? All it needs is a little bit of water. Not enough water to put out the fire. <laughs> the hydrogen economy from the people who brought you the Hindenburg. <laughs> hey, these people are charred and damp. I see these idiots now won't even put out their cigarette while they're filling up their car. I'll be damned if I'm going to the hydrogen filling station. I'll be going to the full serve hydrogen, the one where you sit in a bunker 20 blocks away while some guy drives your car for you. Huh? Some guy who, I don't know, maybe was a doctor or an engineer in his own country. Huh? Oh, we're testing the water here. We are testing the water. Moving slowly into the... You have to be so careful these days because now we're so, we're so indoctrinated as a society as to what should offend us now. Eh? We, we go, we draw lines and go, well, that's not funny, that's offensive. No, it's funny and offensive. So fuck off. That's funny and offensive, too. <sighs> Do you have any spare change? I'm sorry, I thought that was the standard greeting downtown here. I... <laughs> you got a few homeless people, is what I'm saying. Oh, they counted the homeless people in Toronto. How do you count that? They're homeless, okay? They could walk around the block while you're out doing the survey. There might be five or ten really fast homeless people. <laughs> Gotta get a more accurate sense. And I shouldn't even say, because you know some government guy will come up and be like, tag the homeless or something. <laughs> That's all we need, huh? Forest rangers on the street with tranquilizer guns and poor little wino on the corner, you got a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> he wakes up, he's got a numbered tag on his ear. Pretty soon they're falling around in helicopters plotting his migration patterns. And Welfare liquor store, welfare liquor store, welfare liquor store, casino, welfare. <laughs> Do not go to casinos, they are people traps. Huh? 
You know, I live near the Niagara Falls Casino. They should build the Niagara Falls Casino over the falls. You can watch your fucking money going over the edge. <laughs> You wouldn't even need a game. All you need is something to float the bet on, right? Because people come along, oh, check this out. This looks cool. Here, give me here, watch. Here we go. Here, here we go. <laughs> oh, here comes another one. Hang on. Here comes another one. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, we're going to double down. We're going to double down here. casino. See, it's all, it's all psychology, bells, whistles, happy sounds, circus for adults, and bing, bing, doodle, 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 we're tossing our money, don't give a shit, bing, bong, doodle, 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 doodle,
My mom hates that joke. <laughs> oh, my mom, she's such a mom. She says all these mom things. I bet you've heard this. You've either heard it or you've said it to your own kids, especially if anyone's involved in any kind of an artistic endeavor. Well, comedy's nice, but you should have something to fall back on. <laughs> Well, I have you. <laughs> oh, she worries about the drug. This is her big worry. She thinks I'm going to get killed in a drug deal. Not because I'll be buying drugs, but because I might be there when a drug deal goes bad. You always hear this on the news. A drug deal went bad. People got killed. A drug deal went bad. Drug deals don't start off very good. Everybody has cash, automatic weapons, they're high, it's dark, it's illegal, lot of room for error. Must be good drug deals, never make the paper. Two for one, say that is a good drug deal. Well, I am very glad we walked down this dark alley, sir, and ran into you. See, you didn't want to walk down the dark alley, but I did, and I got us a deal. Look at that, he's throwing in the briefcase, he's throwing in the briefcase. I can just see me in a drug deal. I know how we go. Oh, oh, so you don't take checks. Well, this would be one of those ones that goes bad I've read so much about. It. Oh, well, my mom hears this, she's gonna laugh. Oh, I told him, I told him. Oh man, I tell you, I look around the world sometimes and I wonder if I should have kids. I have kids, I just wonder. I can't do it. She's actually, she's uh, 10, she's, oh, she's, we had her birthday at our house. We, oh, do not have them in the house. Get them, go to Chucky, get out, get them out of the, at one point, oh my God, at one point, I had 13 little girls in my basement, which I realize sounds kind of creepy out of context, but <laughs> she wouldn't want someone to walk in right, what the hell kind of show is this? Because there's all these guys in building these dungeons in Europe, for some reason, it's very fashionable to lock your daughter away for 30 years. It is. It, I, all I can figure is overprotection. Like, oh, how many incidents? Well, you know, to go outside. It's a scary place outside. Of look at this a nice house. Look at outside. We have a nice house like it is. Well, well, look at this a nice a dead room. This is a beautiful bedroom. A little girl living in this a nice bedroom. Look at this closet. <gasps> big, big closet. Look in the back of the closet. See the door. I wonder where that goes. Eh? I know it's creepy and horrible, and as a father, I did, although, although, if I'm totally honest, having had 13 little girls in my basement, I can certainly see the value in building a soundproof chamber. <laughs> With the worst taste in music, they're all in this Hannah Montana, this Miley Cyrus, whose dad is Billy Ray Achey breaking heart? Said, who could have known at the time he'd be responsible for two of the most annoying things in my life? <laughs> so I feel at a bit of a disadvantage here because I normally make fun of the government, but I'm not sure who they are. Right now. <laughs> Uh, I've actually started this new thing, because uh, I do normally make a lot of jokes about the government, but I've started a new thing uh, that I call government-style comedy. That is where I don't actually tell any jokes, I just take out a bunch of ads to tell you how funny I am. <laughs> and use your money to do it. <laughs> don't you love government commercials, right? Because they always have to put that in the brought to you by the government. Yeah, I know it's brought to me, but I don't need that. They shouldn't be allowed to. We should have a referendum or something. So every time they run an ad, it has to say, brought to you by you with your money. Here's some more shit you didn't need to know. Here's some more useless information you paid for. <laughs> you want to clap, but you don't. You kind of Canadian. You got very Canadian. There's like, yeah, we're having a good time. But we don't want to let anybody know. <laughs> because the government will take it away from us. Visit our website. Don't you love government website? Like, people can't keep simple stuff in their head, but the government cannot do anything simple. It's always like, visit our website.gc.gov.org slash accenting you and simple from a BC totem pole, David Suzuki's thumbprint. What, 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 what do I press to get that, for God's sake? 
Look at the flu. Look at the way they handled the flu. The government handled the flu. Like, well, what should, the flu is coming. What should we do? But wash your hands. That's all we got for the government. Wash your hands. Visit our website. Learn to wash your hands in French. It's important. Wash your hands and lab your hands. Wash your hands. That's a cure for everything now, eh? Wash your hands. Flu can't get me. <laughs> OCD people feel a little better about themselves. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying. Yes, I'm trying. It's ridiculous. We've all become so germaphobic. We, we just we walk around wiping down surfaces and spraying everything and disinfecting it. Why stop there? Why stop there? Why not just disinfect the whole city at once? It's disinfection day, so get outside and breathe deep when you see the planes go over it. It's a mistake, you know, I, and, 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 and I'll say this before I continue. And you notice this too, no one will even shake your hand. It's always like fist bumping now, this fist bumping. But well, we're not sharing germs now, we're fist bumping. Do you think that's fooling the germs? In any way, do you, do you, don't you think the germs are transferring 10 trillion at a time when your fists meet for that? But what do you think is happening? You think the, two, the, the germs are on one fist, go, oh, oh, what was that? Shit, we missed our trip out of here. Pay attention next time. Wash your hands. And when, by the way, did it suddenly become necessary to dry our hands with a fucking jet engine? <laughs> you walk into some bathrooms these days and they have some torque you can work out of there. <laughs> Don't turn them all on at once, the structural integrity of the building cannot handle it. How many windmills are spinning because some asshole has to dry his hands? I thought we were trying to save energy. What's the plan here? Cauterize the wound. Blow the germs around. And I'll say this before I continue. I'm not a doctor. I think we're making a mistake. I think we're isolating the germs within ourselves. I mean, there are, there are good germs and bad germs. And these germs are fighting it out in a germ war that, by the way, <laughs> do you ever think about how German people must feel? <laughs> when they hear the word germ, when that was first discovered, blah, 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 this is the name of this whole new thing, but that is, this is germ, really? Germ, we're going to call it germ, yeah, that, that's a word we're going to use for this for now on, the whole thing is a germ. It, 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 36 letters, you can't arrange them any other fucking way, germ. Yeah, wonderful, germ, good, yeah, wonderful, good. Germ. To the germs. I know the Germans, for God's sakes, what did they ever do? It's worse now. It's worse now with the multimedia mass media. Kill the germs. Kills household germs. Kills germs on contact. Kill the germs. Other germ killers leave behind. Kill the germs. I know. Couldn't get away with all germs. Don't laugh and then tell me it's not funny. <laughs> I hate that. But worse, it's getting to the point now where we get offended on behalf of other people. I'm, like, I'm not offended personally, but I believe someone else might be. So, as a Canadian, I don't think I should laugh at that particular piece of In the bar, on the way home, fucking hilarious shirt. But not here. Not here in front of these good people in the theater. I'm not saying it's not funny, it might be fine, I don't know what's funny. I'm sure that God, the government has a list of what I can and cannot laugh at. And when I say God, I don't mean to slight any of the other deities, certainly all of it. You know, I might laugh, I haven't made up my mind completely. I might laugh, I mean, I, mean, I, I, I don't know what's funny. If more people laugh, I might, you know, if, if I'm a team player. I'm a team If 99% of the 
people, I will jump right in there and show my support because I'm Canadian and I'm not afraid to let people know what I think, provided we can see what everybody else has to say first of all. Don't 
回去吗？你，他们流血了，我们那个。Late at night, you always have late at night. All the app stuff is on. You know, app rolling, app, app detector. Where is the app detector? He said, Doctor, hold app detector. See if you have any app at all, or should just lay on couch like that lazy bastard. Some people have two or three app detectors because that lazy bastard can't get off ass and give app detector to other fat lazy bastard. Have to write in address, delivered to blue chair. Hello, I'm Dr. Ho's sister. I'm happy about everything. <laughs> oh, I was on a cruise ship recently. Oh my god, the fattest people in the world. I, and I am not, the, I told you, I'm a fat guy, but holy crap, I was scared. People get on the boat, and I'm like, are they dividing these left, right, port, starboard, kind of thing up? Then is there any kind of pre-interview before they come to the boat? Or, uh, I see people getting on an elevator going da -da -da -da, down, down, heavy shit goes to the bottom of the canoe. That's all I know. <laughs> Am I being sensitive? I don't want to be. I don't want to be in the middle of my cruiser. We're listening. Move the buffet hard to port. Move the buffet hard to port. Get some more fries out there. Get some. Move the buffet. Oh my God! I saw this enormous black woman. Look at this! I haven't even said the joke. I said black woman, and you go, oh, 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 oh there'll be nothing funny coming at this point. Oh she was black, and she was a woman. How else am I supposed to tell the story? Would it help if she was white? Would that make the story better? If she could tell the story then? If she... I'll give you this. If she was white, she would look way fatter. <laughs> well, I do not make this easy for myself. This is a dangerous damn trail just to get there. Hey. Oh. Get an iPad yet? You got an iPad, new iPad, iPhone, I. It's all marketing. It it's sort of it was like iMac, and then there's iPod, and then there's iTunes, now there's iPad, and then they went crazy. There's an iDog and an iFish. And there's a there's a religion. I slam. Uh, <laughs> check it out. Totally radical. Totally radical. You see what's going on in Iran now? In Iran, they, they, they're they're concerned that the, the imams are concerned that too many Iranians are wearing Western clothing, right? So now they want to have an Islamic dress code. Yeah. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope it's the Aladdin curvy boots and the big curvy swords. <laughs> Don't you want to see that at the UN? Why don't you respect us? <laughs> Just for the men, huh? The women still free to wear the burlap bag with a feeding hole. Islam isn't exactly the world's biggest part of women's participation religion. No religion, there's no religion that's good for women. There's none. And the, the, you know, in the, the Hindu religion, they kind of take second place. In the Catholic religion, they can't become priests. I mean, ladies, I'm no theologian, but it seems to me that God doesn't like you. <laughs> I know I come off as a bit of a sexist, but I, I am very proud to have a daughter. I'm happy to have a daughter, I really am. First of all, girls do better in school than boys. Yes, because you're not allowed to say that they don't. <laughs> high school boys are having a terrible time. Have you heard this? High school boys dropping out of school can't cope with school. Do you know why? Because there are high school girls in school, that's why. You see the way these little tarts dress? Jeez. I can't even stay on the road when I go past the school. I'm going to learn in that poison environment. And I'll tell you something else. This slow down in a school zone is just asking for trouble. You hit a school zone, speak, cover your eyes and floor it, floor it, floor it. Go listen to their siren songs. I smell Justin Bieber. I smell Justin Bieber. Your boy, you're probably an ADD to begin with. It's 
probably all you can do to just keep your mind on the board for the time you're in the class. It's like, no, just look at the board. Just look, just don't, don't, don't just look, just follow it. Just don't look, look at that. That is unbelievable. Oh my God, where was that earlier? Did that just come in now? I said, well, let's see down here. Hang on, hold on. Okay, all right, I see what he's doing now. He's like, oh, look at that. Look at those, look at those move under that. I just, I'm gonna have to meet those, that. I have to go talk to them, not somehow arrange it so I meet that to talk to those somehow. I'm gonna get to that, what do you do? You know, it'd be cool if those were on the board. <laughs> Well, your nice group, I have to say, uh, it's because I'm getting older, you know, and if I'm, as I'm getting older, then I'm starting to ask myself certain questions that maybe don't think about when you're younger, but as you get older, you feel the need to know some things. Why am I here? Not in the spiritual sense, just standing in the basement. <laughs> It's scary. We had homegrown terrorists. Homegrown? I was shocked. I 
was stuck. I was like, what? There's never going to be a terrorist attack in Canada. This is where they send their relatives for safety. <laughs> Why are all the dollar stores closed? <laughs> oh, something's not right. I'm getting the hell out of here. Taxi! Tap, tap, tap. Oh, shit! Oh! Yeah, laugh it up, you racist bastards. <laughs> it's a scary world. You can set off a bomb with a phone now. There's an app for that. Thank you very, very much. Good night.